little um, other other homages. Yeah, there's other homages in there too. So we wanted to mix them up a little bit, make them a little more. Uh, we wanted to make the vehicle a little more um, earthly, even though it's still futuristic. And uh, uh, we were pretty happy with that. Program. Hey, which character was the hardest to design, or went through the most changes? Mm -hmm. Um, Lockdown went through a lot of changes because I had originally designed him as very Frankenstein-like and he had little tiny arms and, and big arms too and, and uh, <clears throat> he went through a lot of changes Paul went through a lot of changes too he was, you know, when I first started him out he had his wheels on the shoulder and uh, he was he was white like the original Prowl and um, I think those guys were, they went through the most revision process like uh, as far as who was really hard to draw, like Omega Supreme was really hard to draw because he's a lot more detailed than, than our normal um, just for animated model. And it just takes more time. And, and Thanks. Hi. Hi. I was wondering, what's the female Starscream clone's name? Thank you. I don't know if I'm allowed to say. Uh, it's not Susan. <laughs> uh, it's not Dirge. Um, <clears throat> Laser Beak. <laughs> I don't think your name is Laser Beak. Um, I would like to tell you, but I don't know if I can. Can I guess? Okay. Is it Nightbird? No, it's not Nightbird. Is it Laser Wave? No, it's not Laser Wave. I don't know. It's Dogwave's Japanese name. Somebody said it. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> so, do you have another question? Since that one's not. Uh, um, will there be more female characters introduced before the end of the series? Uh, there, there may be more um, female incidental characters. Um, not not main, main characters, though. Flip sides? <laughs> Uh, no for the time. That was really good time. Thank you. Thank you. I actually have uh, two questions. One regarding the recent episode. Uh, when you were designing the multiple sound waves that were attacking the Autobots in the virtual world, did you have like the Sound Blaster paint job in mind when you did that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sound Blaster and then the, the white one is the Sonic White. Yeah. 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 And then, the, so the, supposedly the toys with the red hat is supposed to be the, the sound blaster colors, did you? And in regards to Transwarp, when you had um, a lot of us Prime's team defending Space Bridge, how long did it take you to track down Jude Nelson? And then Jude Nelson, um, well, all of our our voice casting goes through Sue Blue, who you guys all know. Um, she's awesome. She voiced RC, I know that. Yeah, one. she 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 was directed Beast Wars. So it, uh, all we have to do is ask her, and she usually gets us anybody we ask for. Um, I actually have two questions. Okay. One is, have, um, was it hard to choose the characters that you were going to put in the series? It's always really hard because everybody has a wish list of characters they want to put in. And there's only so many episodes in a season and only so many stories we can tell and only so many characters we can squeeze in. So we really... it's. It's a real uh, process trying to trying to go through everybody's wish list and trying to pick characters who are popular and you know trying to squeeze some obscure ones in there too. So it's tough. And my second question is, um, how did you come up with the concept of sorry? Sorry, the the concept of sorry was was uh, in the Bible when I came on the show and. Um, she was always meant to be to be revealed to be tech organic. And so I just I just kind of worked the design from from what was in the Bible and what Marty had, had in mind for her character. Okay, two questions. <clears throat> Are there any plans to put Unicron in the series? Is it Unicron? Is he gonna be in the series? Oh. Any plans of it? No. Um, I don't want to do Unicron. I, I love Unicron, and because I love the X Six movie, but I don't think we could do Unicron as well as that movie did. I don't think 
I don't know if it could ever be done as well as that. So I, I don't think I would. Confirm No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, my second question. Would there be any more combiners? No, not consistent. Thanks for the questions. Oh, you need to the answers. All right, just a question. Hey, just a question based on, uh, you said in the past interviews, you know, your top four characters were Swindle, Waspinator, Ratnack, and Galvatron, and you got three or four of them in. Yeah. So, uh, who would be the next uh, group of four characters you would want to get in after those ones? Well, Strike was one of those, and Grandis. Blot, I wouldn't really like that in the show, but never did. Um, there's so many. Like, I, my list is, it just goes on and on. Okay. It never, it never ends. Beast Wars uh, Megatron? Yeah, I would love to do some of the beast, more Beast Wars characters. Um, I don't know how Megatron would work. I'm trying to, like, trying to change the past. I'm trying to I'm traveling to Detroit trying to stop something. <laughs> I don't know if that's in our, in our, in our past or in our future, though. Like, no, obviously it's, I mean, it's in the future, future even further from the one Transformers animated when he jumps to Detroit or something. <laughs> Concept arts? Did you have to do before you made the real one? Uh, for for every character, or, I mean, it depends on, on, on the character. Sometimes I do just one, and I like it, and everybody likes it. And then I mean, some, for Bulkhead. Oh, for Bulkhead? Yeah. Bulkhead, we did. I did one. The first one I did was was um, surprisingly was even fatter and rounder. <laughs> um, and then they kind of had me make his proportions more like a, like a football player, so he squared his shoulders off. So I think he went through probably two, two or three different versions. We did the, those um, ones I, I, when I was trying to figure out what color he was, too, we went through a lot of different color changes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what gave you the idea to make Shockwave uh, a uh, spy bar? That, I think, was Marty's idea. Um, Corey Burton always loved doing Shockwave's voice, even in the original show, and he really wanted to do that character again. And so Marty thought of that way of writing him into the show, so he could uh, he could have a lot of, a lot of screen time. Okay, thanks. I know you got Ratchet as your cranky old guy. How come you've never seen Cup? I would love to do Cup. Um, it's just it's just a matter of. of uh, of time, really. Um, you know, there's so many characters I, I still would want to put in the show, and we just um, we just haven't had time or the opportunity to do it. Um, I think I think you could do a, a, a cup that still having to be old and, and not be the same as Ratchet too. I think it would be pretty easy to do and fun. So, uh, what's the status on Rodimus? <laughs> <laughs> Rodimus is fine. He's recovering. He's, he's uh, getting de-rusted, but he's still alive. He's online. Will he uh, be back in future Um There may be, you know, he may be walking around in a crowd or something. I don't think he does. He doesn't have a, another uh, big role this season. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, okay. I have quite a lot of questions. Okay. So please bear with me if some of them are here because I didn't wait too late in this Okay, um, truth be told, there are several people who have been turned off by Transport's anime after seeing the animation in the promo posters. What do you have to say to all the people? Another paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> Dissertation. <laughs> okay, anyway, that's their question on me. Sorry. What do you have to say to all the people now that animated is being compared to G1 and break this? I said, ha for me, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm a big Transformers fan. I'm kind of making this show as much for me as, as for you or for kids. So I'm trying to do a show that I want to see. So. Since you have added many characters from G1, Beast Wars, and Beast Machines, there are little references to Japanese parts of the franchise. Have you ever thought of adding some of the Japanese robots and animators, such as Lyle Convoy? Uh, not Lyle Convoy, uh, but there are definitely Japanese characters coming. Um, Grandis is in the show. Sound Blaster. Oh, Sound Blaster. Yeah. Sound Blaster. <laughs> um, uh, there are more. There are more um, um, cameo 
uh, deputy secretary is? Um, when looking at Ultra Magnus in season two, he gave out uh, he gave out this kind of godlike appearance in his style of weaponry and how he addresses a lot of us. Do you ever think that adding more of that godlike character in your animation after Marty Eisenberg written that character? Um, making Magnus more godly? Yeah, because he had more like references to Thor, God of Light, uh, Thor, uh, the Norse God of uh, Light. No, I don't think so. I think he's a he's a uh, he's a normal transformer. No. He's not a god. Yeah, I know, but still, like it's kind of like I don't know. Based on how I perceive the perception, he seems to have like this. He's very wise. I mean, he's very wise. He's a, he's a he's he is really a great leader. He's um, he's made choices that were difficult and not always the right choices, but. But he's, uh, you know, uh, for lack of a better term, he's human. He's, he's not a god. <laughs> um, what gave you the idea uh, to draw Rekhar as a naive, as a naive uh, Autobot compared to the uh, compared to the television talk, uh, talking junkie from uh, one? Uh, that was uh, that was again that was Marty Eisenberg um, interpreting that character that way. He thought it would be be funny to play. Um, <laughs> You know, instead of having him just talk TV, he's he's um, he's still like a real um, um, you know someone who would be a real suggestible TV, TV junkie. Um, okay, I'm gonna skip this one question. When looking at Black House alt mode, it seemed more akin to Obsidian rather than the movie version. Is this an only reference, or was Obsidian intentionally going to be an enemy? Obsidian for Beast Machine? Yes. No, he was always meant to be Blackout. Uh, Obsidian would be smaller, I think. Um, yeah, but this all don't look uh, because Blackout's all don't just kind of reminded me a lot of Beast Machine. Well, it's supposed to be a, you know, a Cybertron, Cybertronian version of a helicopter. That's what the equivalent of whatever that game was. So, um, no, there's no Obsidian in, in Blackout. Okay. Seeing that Master System in Season 3 was really surprising, and we all know it's really our favorite, not the writer. But can you at least confirm? You might see more human villains in this season? Uh, season 3, no, we were asked uh, to reduce the number of human villains this season, so... So no meltdown? No meltdown, and uh, there, was a, there was a small Angry Archer part in, in uh, Human Error, but it got cut for time. The episode was too long, so it got cut out. <laughs> oh, okay. No, not really. I don't even think Bumblebee is really. I mean, Bumper is obviously not a small child. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it's funny because um, I did try to put a little of David K in Optimus, but his face is pretty much just Optimus, you know, colored flesh color instead of blue. It looks really similar, though. Yeah, it, it, it was really <laughs> funny when it turned out. David Gerald looked that a lot, too. But yeah, the, um, uh, Bill Fucker Baki is not. Um, He's, he's very slender man. <laughs> Tall, but he's not, not bulky. Yeah. Um, I was going to human error part one. Team Char was introduced in a cameo. How did the Earth Five Boss know what Team Char would really look like, considering that he appeared to battle and chase Rodimus' team? How did the Autobots know? Yeah, how did the Earth Auto, uh, how did the Autobots, uh, how did our regular Autobots know, considering that, uh, that they only appeared in the battle? I don't know if they would know. Maybe Ratchet is making comment, but I don't think any of the other ones would have. Possibly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is very off. Which series was more fun to work on? Transformers, Teen Titans, or Fosters? I only did um, a small freelance on Fosters. I think I did a, a old lady in a rocking chair. It was like about the thing I did. So it was, it was just a, a freelance game. Um, Teen Titans was a lot of fun to work on. It was a great crew. I really had fun working on that show. But I would have to say Transformers just because it's, it's probably my dream job. Because that that was a pet project of Eric Sibanella from Hasbro, and he had wanted to do 
those jet twins for since the beginning of this this Keith, this series. Um, even when it was called Heroes, he had concept art for it. Um, I don't really get the sideswipe and the Sunstreaker love. I never really understood those characters that much. I'm like, they're just cars. They don't really have. I don't know. They they don't really mean that much to me. So I wouldn't. I would never fight to get them in the show. If someone else wanted to, I wouldn't oppose it. But like, they they're not that important to me. All right, thank so. you. Uh, hi. Um, hi. How, did, how did you come up with the design for Bumblebee's human form? Like, what was from that design? Well, I, w I was trying to do the humans, and the, the first pass, they're way more Scooby-Doo. Like, Fred, or, uh, Optimus has Fred's uh, scarf and, like, a, a, a sweater. <laughs> Hasbro said, no, come on, you can't do that. It's got to be a little more heroic than that. So, um, but I, I kind of just um, was drawing what I thought of when I heard Bumper doing in voice, you know, and, and I tried to incorporate some of the, the um, robot elements, you know, the stripe and yeah. the horns and the hat. Um, also, uh, how did you get the job as the lead character designer? Uh, I. I met the executive producer of the show, Sam Register, yeah. when I was at Cartoon Network doing Teen Titans. And Sam liked my artwork a lot on that show and would always have me do development for a new series. And usually they would never, you know, they would never get off the ground. But he came to me with this and he did he had no idea I was a Transformers fan. And he asked me if I wanted to take a pass at it and I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, one more question. At this point, would you ever be would you be able to confirm a season four of Transformers animated? I can't. I can't uh, confirm more than I right now. Oh. Um, uh, we're supposed to. Hasbro's supposed to, to say something about it. Um, the okay, we'll to see how Maybe. Okay, thank you. Please make more. <laughs> uh, in regards to Team Shark, we know that um, Oil Slick gets an Earth vehicle mode, but do the other uh, characters get? Earth modes as well? Well, the, nobody, none of the, the, well, you mean it in the, in the show? Well, um, well, we know that the Blackout toy is coming. Right. But we don't know if He's it's Cybertronian or if it's uh, Cable or something. Earth mode. Okay. Um, you said before that um, you regretted when you were uh, thinking of Headmaster that you didn't incorporate any Gurenlog and uh, yeah. references in it. Uh, did they finally make it into the show when it came to uh, Sari's transformation and their boss using drills? A little. Uh, um, I mean, the, the, the drills are kind of the cerebro shells from the long show. Um, um, Sari is a little more bad-buster, I think, than, than her mind. And uh, the... The dialyst design I did has, has big drills on. He's he's a little more I think or not inspired than, than the other guys. And um, is there any chance of uh, the Omega Scream color job coming <laughs> into the show? At all? It'd be very tiny. A little walk on camera. Not not in season three. Thank you. All right. When we look at a lot of the characters that appear early on in season three, Thrawn, Hotshot, Cyclonus, Warpath, even Beach Cover, who they get in later, were they designed in mind with the fact that they were getting toys or had toys released recently through universe lines? Um, nothing, not not from universe, but but we do um, we do almost every character with toys in mind. So Eric Subinella works out a functional transformation. And you know we'll figure out what parts can go where early on, so that they can take that if they want to make a toilet. They can make a. You know. All right. Um, Transformers animated contains a lot of hidden secrets and fan arts that most of the mainstream fans wouldn't get. Which was your favorite one to do, and you're most surprised that actually made it. There's so many that, that not even Transformers fans have found yet. So that I think it's kind of motorbike. Huh? The wrecked our motorbike. That, yeah, that was in there. That, that was like a one frame thing. Was yeah, there's like, like two frames of animation. But there was there's um there's stuff from. Uh, 
I, you know, I think that uh, uh, my favorite stuff is, is is sneaking in the Japanese stuff, like you know, seeing Hydra and, and uh, Cancer, having having dinner with Marty. You know? <laughs> and uh, I really like that we got Randis in the show. That was my my big goal for this season. Was a cameo. Thank you. What was your first boy that you ever got, and then? Did you, were you able to get it into the show and kind of treat it a little differently than other characters? Mm -hmm. No, I think my first my first Transformer was Ravage. And uh, I didn't, I, we never got to put him in the show, but he would be, I would really like to figure out some way. Yeah. I don't know what he would be, but it would be cool to figure out. Thank you. Hi there, uh, I was just wondering, have you been approached to do any designs for another show? Maybe past animated onto something different, much like we're doing with the idea of a little bit of a crossing plan or something else. As far as Transformers goes, or other Transformers, yeah. And uh, I can't really talk about it. I can't really say anything about that. Um, All right, man. Cool, thank you. <laughs> Which means maybe. Yeah, I can't stop coming. <laughs> you said your favorite uh, character was uh, Swindle, right? Mm -hmm. Who are you in the show? Your own little Raphael there. <laughs> uh, who am I in the show? Who do you yeah. tell to be you? Your representative. I'm the guy on top of the toy building. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, you stumped me on that one. I don't know, I don't know what my equivalent is. Probably some deck, I guess. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I my question is, is Blur dead? Blur is... It doesn't look good for <laughs> <laughs> um, I saw on a site that it was a picture of him with his sparks so Yeah, I tried to I tried to put that into the model. So this is, it was weird because I was I guess I was so focused on on other things that I didn't really realize Blur was gonna die dying. You know, I thought like, oh okay, yeah, we'll bring him back later. And then what you know, so I put the spark in the in the, in the, and then mushed up cube, but it didn't really make it into the animation. But then, Cliff Chipper kind of dumps him in the incinerator <laughs> right after that, too. So I was like, oh, well. Yeah, it doesn't, uh, doesn't go well. Well, you know, it, it, I don't know, anything's possible, I guess, but. Uh, for Omega Supreme, is uh, Sentinel Prime ship another Omega? Is it like identical? Um, it's possible that it's, it, it could have been at one time. Omega Sentinel. Uh, any more elite guards coming? Uh, I don't think so. Not that I can remember. No, I don't think so. That's it. Thank you. How about a chance of any more Dinobots? I know we've got three, but... Oh, uh, yeah, I would love to do the other two. We, we, never, we never had a chance to do that. Okay. Then we can have Snow and then Snow too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. If you were to remove one character from the show, who would it be? Remove a character? Yeah, just to get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know. I can't really, I can't really think of one I would want to remove. Do you like them all? I like them all. I like them all for different reasons too. Like some, some of them I like them because I don't like them. So. What is the name of the elite card ship that Magnus is flying in the episode when they appear on Earth? Is it the like the card one? Is it? The blue ship? Yeah. The, uh, um, um, I think there's a name for it. You have to ask. You should ask Sentinel Prime on his Twitter. On his Twitter. You know, I think it's called Storm? No. Steel Haven. Thank you. Yes, it's the Steel Haven. Okay, thanks. Hi, um, I guess it's probably too late to ask for uh, the rest of the season. Sorry, but have there been a chance to continue for maybe in the comments or whatever? Um, could there have been any potential scope for uh, an animated equivalent of Shattered Glass, like say? Um, yes, we have um, actually thought about doing that for the past two seasons of doing the Mirror Universe. If only to have at the very end, Ben Zone say, This is why I love machines! <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that would have been really funny. We 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 done. We had talked about that quite a bit actually. So. Okay, I have another question. Um, since I noticed that 
Blur and Shockwave have trans tech designs in their forms. Have you ever thought of uh, adding uh, more some of that uh, some of the trans tech series into uh, Transforms anime? Um, I didn't even know Shockwave had trans tech in it. Apparently, he's apparently according to Wiki, he has more he has similar designs to um, trans tech Megatron. Oh, I see. Yeah, the the blur thing was intentional on my part. Maybe Eric put put uh, the because he kind of designed the tank and the and the long arm crane vehicle. Um, I don't think so. I don't I don't know. Um, I mean, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like a truck with a gorilla face. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. I like that stuff, but I don't know if it fits. You know. Hi. Right. Um, in recent days, I just noticed that you're pretty involved with the online Transformers community. Um, I just want to know how that all came about, and then, yeah, I just noticed lately, like, Piaf got a rat trap for his birthday. <laughs> yeah. So I was just wondering how you got involved with all that. Um, I don't know. I just, it started with my blog, I guess, and then I and then started interacting with people from there, and then, then, uh, there was more on Twitter, and, and uh, I don't know, we just kind of spiraled out of control, I guess, you know, like a snowball rolling down the hill. And when do we get to see all those designs? Which ones? The, the whole big list I read the other day. From Pascal. Oh, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> um, well, I mean, the, you have uh, what, four episodes left, so we should be in one of those four, I guess. Great, thanks. Uh -huh. Hello. Hi. Um, my question is, with uh, Magnus now out of commission, mm -hmm. who's in charge back on Cybertron? Is that Sentinel Prime? Yeah, Sentinel is, is temporary Magnus. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, still, you know, he still has to answer to the the civilian leadership of the Autobots, which is the, you know, the High Council, and Perceptor and, and Alpha Trion are very involved with that, but he ultimately is, is uh, temporary Magnus right now, until and if he gets the hammer, well, he can be made the official magnet. Yeah. <laughs> I have one more quick, quick uh -huh. question. Um, is Starscream going to get his body back before the end of the season? Mm -hmm. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, What motivated you to make an animated fan of us? Vangelis, oh. <laughs> 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 the, the, the funny thing is, it was probably just looking at his his head on, on Twitter <laughs> all the time, and I'm like, oh, it's like a big square head with a little tiny face. That would be so easy to draw. <laughs> and it's by a little control from there. Howdy, <laughs> <laughs> right, I was a little bit late, so uh, forgive me if this has already been asked. Okay. Uh, one, uh, one of the human characters in the animated series, uh, the police officer, free zone, the pro one of the um, as far as his uh, creation exception is concerned, was he based on uh, Sipowitz uh, from a certain uh, police uh, film? I look at him and I'm just like, it just screams. Uh, it's it's probably, uh, probably more a Marty question, I, you know, because um, that's more how he's written, I guess. And, uh, oh, I, I based his, his look on uh, a British sitcom called The Thin Blue Line. There's a guy who sort of has the same mustache and <laughs> And, uh, yeah, and I sort of, sort of beefed him up from there, so yeah, that's what, that's what my, but I think, you know, yeah, Marty's is probably what his, uh, his written persona is probably different from that. Thanks, and the second question, I think this may have been asked, if you want to read, tell me, this show is not being canceled. <laughs> I can't, I can't comment. Yeah. Uh, um, Hasbro should be able to comment on it probably at the, another convention. Well, do we have probably not a lot of you have any dialogue with people, they have Tactical line of two generations of nostalgia. You're going to be fools to get rid of the show. It's like it caught me. Back. It is good. Thank you. Stephen Hawking. Oh, was that always your intention? That was um, because I thought that voice would be the total personification of science and intelligence. And I wanted, I wanted him to sound like the smartest robot you've ever heard in your life. 
<laughs> I also thought that, that it's possible he could have deleted his personalities and, and, and emotion to make room for other information that he stores. Hi. Um, every time I see Sentinel on screen, I get the biggest kick out of how he looks like a cybertronian version of the tech. <laughs> That's a I don't know anything about that. <laughs> um, I guess my question would be is, um, is there any chance of maybe like a subliminal tick reference with Sentinel in the future? There has been. Well, I don't know if we, I don't know if we, um, you mean like a spoon? Kind of yeah, thing? I said something, something yeah, I don't know. Like that. that was, that, that reason is very good. I don't know, I don't, not, not really, probably, um, at least as far as I can remember. Right Are you ever in, um, uh, even once a movement in the voice acting sessions? Uh, I go every time, yeah. Um, has Townsend Coleman ever just thrown something out, like, when, when the tape isn't rolling? Or... <laughs> what do you mean? I know, I, just, I, I like it's I said, the, every... the, sessions, the sessions are always very wacky, and like the, you know, the guys are, the guys are really good friends, and, and especially how David and, and Townsend play off of each other is really amazing, so like, yeah, there's, I mean, that, that stuff happens, I guess, <laughs> it's, okay. it's great, it's awesome. With all of Soundwave's instruments, like the guitar and the guitar, it got me thinking, are we ever going to see the touch in animated? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know how uh, to get it. I guess it's probably not, because then Pedro would have to own it first, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to The All Spark has kind of been missing in action for this season. Is it yes. going to make a comeback by? That is a good question. Um, <laughs> mm, I it could, maybe, possibly. <laughs> maybe. maybe. Hi again. Uh, just to wrap it on her question, was the All Spark? If you bring back the All Spark, don't you got to kill off all those characters who have the pieces of the All Spark in them? That is also a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Especially, you know, all, everybody got to be killed off then. Yeah, well, you know, the people that were close enough to what's going on, I guess, would maybe. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> Any more Beast War characters coming? Like the auto, the Maximals that you guys showed? Yes. Just uh, a really, really quick one. Is there a, I'll turn back this hammer. Is there some sort of signif is there significance to it other than the fact that Magnus used it to shoot the electricity and it's got the evidence ceremonial significance? I think so. I think it's a an older Ottawa artifact. Is there going to be some significance? We'll find out about the why shot. I don't know if we'll uh, it won't I don't know if we'll end up in the show or not, but it's possible. It's, I was thinking it's possible that it, they could have forged the the um, all spark container with the with the hammer. <laughs> And uh, coming up with designs for the All Spark, uh, it just from my perspective, it looks like the All Army should have leadership with mm -hmm. memorable growths and tumors. Was that were you, were you originally just called it the Matrix, or was the All Spark being influenced by the movie? I think that one may have been influenced by the movie. It was weird because in the beginning we were kind of trying to stay away from the movie, but they wanted certain things, like they wanted the All Spark. If it was up to me, it would be the Matrix. All right. Hi. Uh, how much control do you have over the design of the characters, and is there anything in particular that Hasbro vetoes because it's unable to make it? Um, I have all the power. <laughs> I, uh, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes uh, I try to, you know, I try to not to let it get to that point. Eric, Eric Simonal, and I work really closely together, and uh, we get along really well, so we don't usually come to blows over anything. But um, uh, like the lockdown design, the first lockdown design got vetoed because it was too weird. And uh, the, you know, certain things along the way get changed. Anything technical that uh, you know they just can't make it or oh, expensive? Usually, we, we try to like if they can't if they think they can't make it, they they let us know right away so we can move the wheels around or change the, the shape of the whatever. Thanks. All right, so we're gonna end the line up here. So whoever has questions in line can get asked their question, and then we'll uh, close. Okay, my last question, obviously. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Omnibots. They never got any screen time back in anymore. Mm -hmm. Like they were always built as like a secret service for the Omnibots. Did you ever consider that or, or that group to be uh, a lead guard? 
Well, uh, I don't know if they would be leaked out or not. I don't know. I, I would have to. I, well, we haven't considered them yet. Up to, the, up to this point, we haven't. Okay. Um, just to go back to the kind of last question, I was just mm -hmm. uh, curious. Um, there's a point made earlier about whether or not the Oscar can come back, but in the Shadow Glass universe, like in the tech stories, they've been referring to a thing called the Omega Terminus. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like an evil version of Vector Signal. And apparently, it's buried over there, Cybertron, and it has like a sort of an element of time. So I was just curious as to um, whether or not, like, instead, like, um, instead or alongside some sort of rejuvenated Oscar, could there be uh, an Omega Terminus buried on the animated Cybertron and that? If any such promise it could produce could be better, like Shattered Glass and Seven. In the Shattered Glass universe? Well, in the sense that um, it would, the ones that it could produce and stuff are supposed to be the ones that would be in the Shattered Glass universe instead. I'm not sure I understand the question. Then I can't the, the, I think that the Autobots that would produce would be evil and not the purple and stuff around. Right. The same and, but it wouldn't necessarily be something that the regular Autobots would realize that it's too late. Oh, well, I think it would be, you know, I think it would be like Shattered Glass, I don't think it would be but you know, separated into different universes. I don't think there's one on in our universe in fact. Uh, is there a, uh, is there any character I could have actually done up for the Shadow Glass version? So could they ever be put on mine? Uh yeah maybe. I did a I colored a, a purple and black on this time. Or I think I did a white one will be because it was kinda of hoping that could be a the anime version of the Dolce Maybe. Oh yeah, uh is there even a new anime series? I gotta ask, what's with the chins? Chins <laughs> are power. I, I just wanted it to be um, a little more broad and cartoony, and I was drawing on things from like KBC Warriors and Mighty Robots and Simon Bisley kind of stuff. Does it really stack up? <laughs> okay, um, what's the when I know that Jerry Frost is like a reference to Grand Man. Sorry, I guess. Grand Man. Yes. Um, were you aware that there was a uh, uh, Revenge of the Fallen Toy of the same name? No. Oh. I, I was hoping that we would have the first look for it, but yeah. Because if you did, uh, would you put some elements of that into the final design, uh, or just keep it as a um, maybe in the vehicle? Yeah. Not so much in the robot. All right. <laughs> All right, so big thank you to Derek Wyatt. Thank you. so we can make room for other people coming in. Hey, nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. Sure. Sure. From TFW 2005. Oh, hey, here. Say hello. <laughs> How's it going?